A different spacecraft that was in every way just as important, the Cassini spacecraft, and you worked extensively with that at, you know, Saturn. And Saturn is a is an unusual planet, <laughs> to say the least, because of its beautiful ring system, but also the fact that it's it's a gas giant and in resonance with Jupiter and very, very important to the solar system, the formation of the solar system as we know it, and Earth. And that mission, though, that highly successful mission that lasted for many years, how, how did that come about? And how does it relate to the Voyager missions? In other words, as a sort of development of the Voyager missions, how did Cassini come about? Well, Cassini is really and truly a child of Voyager because in the 1980 and 1981 Voyager flybys of Saturn, one of the key questions that Voyager hoped to answer was to see what the surface of Saturn's large moon Titan looked like. We knew Titan had this thick, dense atmosphere. We really wanted to peer down and see what the surface looked like. But with the instruments on board Voyager, we could not see through that photochemical haze. The cameras couldn't see through it. And so we didn't know what the surface looked like. So almost immediately after the two Voyager flybys, some scientists from the United States and Europe began lobbying their space agencies for another mission to go back to Saturn with an orbiter this time that would carry a probe that could go into Titan's atmosphere and land on Titan's surface and to really probe that question that had been left unanswered by Voyager. And so all of that interest from the science community then led to the Cassini mission, and it allowed development of the NASA built the Cassini spacecraft, and the European Space Agency built the Titan probe called Huygens, named after the discoverer of Titan. And so we sent this pair to the Saturn system, and the Huygens probe did successfully land on the surface of Titan, found an absolutely amazing world. We also carried a radar instrument on the orbiter that could probe through the clouds and the haze, and we were better at our filter selection on our cameras so, so we could see the surface of Titan. And we found an amazing place. We found a world where methane plays the role that water plays here on the Earth. It could be a, a gas or a liquid or, or even an ice. And so we saw methane flowing in rivers on Titan and filling North Polar Seas and just an incredible, very, very interesting world, a prebiotic world, perhaps something like the early Earth might have looked like, only it's just very, very cold and that any water is actually the water ice on Titan forms sort of the bedrock or the rock on Titan. So that was just an incredible, incredible set of findings by the Cassini spacecraft. And I think if you thought about Cassini, another star was a moon called Enceladus much smaller than Titan itself. This tiny moon Enceladus actually had jets of ice and gas that were blasting material into space. A lot of these tiny particles formed Saturn's E-ring, but even more important, Enceladus had a liquid water ocean underneath its icy crust. And we think that this ocean might harbor the ingredients for life. And Cassini actually had a chance to fly through these jets coming from the South Pole of Enceladus seven times and sort of and sample and get the composition of the material. And that really leads us to think that perhaps uh, there's really a possibility for an ocean world, in this case, to have life. Two different moons that each have their own liquids, hydrocarbons at Titan and water at Enceladus. And either one could, in principle anyway, and I mean, it take, it's gonna, <laughs> it would take a long time to prove this, but in principle, Either one of them could support some type of life, and particularly Titan would be very low temperature life. And I find that really intriguing that it's almost like a laboratory, the Saturn system, because you've got two different liquid worlds that are very different from each other. That's right. That's right. It is possible that you could have some sort of life in the methane seas. Here you have all these hydrocarbons on Titan, and that's a very interesting possibility. What do we do in the future? to further explore Titan and perhaps more importantly, how do we shield Titan from contaminating it <laughs> with, with our type of life and actually see if it has indigenous microbes or something like that in those methane lakes? Right, well, we have a mission uh, to go back to Titan. It's called Dragonfly. It's gonna be an 
octocopter, actually, uh, that will fly through the atmosphere of Titan and land at various places. It's not targeted to go close to the seas that are at the North Polar region of Titan, but it's going to be taking samples, you know, sort of vacuuming up samples of the surface, taking it into the spacecraft and making measurements of that. So it'll be a very interesting, very interesting mission. I think I think it might be a quadcopter mission, but it's still the idea of actually sending something that can fly in the atmosphere of Titan, I, th I think is very exciting. It doesn't get more exciting than that. Just the idea of, I mean, well, we're doing it on Mars, but just a, a quadcopter <laughs> on Titan. <laughs> but let me ask you this. The mystery of Titan is deeper than, than, than what we've discussed so far. In other words, how does it even have an atmosphere being that small? You would normally think that something like that in the solar system would look like the moon. It would just be this dry, atmosphereless place, but it's not. It's got a thick atmosphere. How is it doing that? Yeah, that's a very interesting question because Jupiter has a large moon, Ganymede. It's about the same size as Titan, maybe a little bit bigger. It doesn't have a thick atmosphere like this. And so that is a very interesting question. Did something impact Titan? Is it just releasing the methane they think that's trapped in this material called clathrate? Clathrate forms like a cage that holds the methane molecule and then can be released with time. We do know this, though, the methane in Titan's atmosphere, it's light, it goes, you know, it's, it goes far away from Titan's center. UV photons hit it and break it apart. And that's what actually helps grow the longer and longer chains of hydrocarbons. But once that source of methane is gone from Titan, then the atmosphere could possibly collapse because it's really the methane working like a greenhouse gas that's keeping everything warm enough to support an atmosphere of that size. So it's a, it's a very inter interesting question. 